solution 10 zionizing and africanizing african investment african investment banking and finance capital when there is political consensus political stability and an acceptable constitution local and foreign investment will be attracted leading to sustainable development in africa foreign investment or foreign capital inflows takes these following forms a foreign direct investment fdi this involves the building of factories and plants in foreign or african countries and the provision of working capital b foreign portfolio investment fpi this is the buying of common and preference shares stocks in foreign or african companies and african government's treasury bills and bonds c commercial loans this involves foreign commercial banks granting of loans to foreign or african firms and enterprises when we say african companies it means foreign companies incorporated with africa foreign companies incorporated in africa or with african branches African countries can copy the template of the Asian Development Bank and the Islamic Development Bank. The Islamic Development Bank set up in 2013 was capitalized to the tune of $150 billion. Saudi Arabia holds a quarter of its paid of capital. The major shareholders as, as at 2015 were Saudi Arabia 26.57%. Libya 10.66%, Iran 9.32%, Egypt 9.22%, Turkey 8.41%, United Arab Emirates 7.54%, Kuwait 7.11%, Pakistan 3.31%, Algeria 3.31%, Indonesia 2.93%. With this structure, which emphasizes membership of the Organization of Islamic Countries, Arab, con most Arab countries, Arab Muslim states have significantly reduced their dependence on foreign Western capital. The opposite to this is the African Development Bank. Founded in 1964, it has two entities the African Development Fund ADF and the Nigerian Trust Fund NTF. The African Development Fund comprises of African and non-African members. The largest ADF shareholder is the United Kingdom with approximately 14% shares followed by US with 6.5% shares and Japan 5.4% shares. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York is designated as the, as the Depositor Bank of the African Development Fund. In 1976, the Nigerian Trust Fund started with $80 million. In 1996, it has increased or swelled to $342 million. Total capital contribution of the fund as at 1996 was 12.58 billion dollars so nigeria is the only african country making the african development bank to look at a, like an african bank the african development fund board of directors is made up of african and non-african members voting powers is 60 percent to 40 percent between african and non-African members. 
the African Development Fund contribution comes from mainly non-African states. That is, they control 60% of the voting powers, while African countries control 40% of the voting powers. It is the Nigerian Trust Fund that gives the African Development Bank an African semblance. The bulk of the finance of the African Development Fund comes from the UK and USA. Therefore, the African Development Bank is new colonial in its nature. It is only African Zionists, not African Canaanites, that can reverse that. The Asian Development Bank, founded in Manila, Philippines, in 1996, 1966, has Asian countries as the largest shareholders with substantial foreign shareholdings. These major shareholders are Japan 15.7%, USA 15.6%, China 6.5%, India 6.4%, Australia 5.8%. Its membership comprises of Asian, non-Asian and Pacific members. Its president is usually a Japanese. China is also attempting, attempting to form a global bank to break the monopoly of the Western powers. The global bank or association is called BRICS. B for Brazil, R for Russia, I for India, C for China, and S for South Africa, BRICS. To this end, African Zionists should pull out from the African Development Bank or alternatively, alternatively they can infiltrate the present ADB, penetrate it to form a truly African, African Development Bank with African capital and minimal Western funds. Nations that abandon capital formation to other nations like African Canaanites like Canaanite, like Canaanite African countries in an evil division of division of labor has have de have disadvantaged themselves. America and China, in spite of their industrialization, have the highest debts in the world, but they owe each other and their own citizens. They do not owe Africans. Let us take a look at the statistics below. National debt of the US $19.8 trillion, interest per year $442.5 billion, interest per second $14,033, that is interest is calculated by per, per second per second, debt per citizen $61. Debt as percentage of GDP in America, $106.32. That is, the debt is uh, greater than the GDP. The GDP itself is $18.6 trillion. Population 324,324,352,551 people. National, let, us, let us look at China. National debt of China $25.6 trillion. Interest per year $870 billion. Interest per second per second $27,750. Population 1.37 billion people. Debt per citizen $21,279. GDP $11 trillion. Debt as percentage of GDP 230%. That is, the debt is, the, their debt is greater than the dollars more than two times the statistics above 
which is similar for many developed countries, show that there are some international bankers who profit from the development of nations. China's debt is roughly 50% 50% of the world debts. The development model of African countries should be tailored towards that of Qatar, Brunei, Switzerland, Macau, and Liechtenstein with low debt levels. However, if Africans decide that they want to owe, it would be better for African, American, European, it would be better for them to owe, it would be better for African, American, European, Asian Jews or fellow Zionists who may have mercy upon them. If Africans want to owe, it is better for them to owe fellow Africans or Americans, Jews or Asian Jews. It would be better for Africans to owe African Jews, to follow to owe fellow African Jews or American Jews or Americans or Europeans or Asians or fellow Zionists who may have mercy on them. The $19.6 trillion debt of America is not owed to Africans. Americans is not owed to, uh, it's not owed to Africans. It is owed to Americans, Europeans, Jews, or the Chinese. The Americans do not owe Africans, and the Chinese do not owe Africans. The Chinese owe Americans, or they owe Jews. Europeans owe Europeans, or Europeans owe Americans, or Europeans owe Chinese. America owes Americans, or America owes Chinese, or America owes Japanese, or, or Israelis, or Jews. They don't owe Africans. It is better for Africans to owe fellow Africans, or for African, African Jews and Zionists to owe American Jews and, and Zionists, or to owe Asian Jews and Zionists who may have mercy on them. We should either beat them in the international money game or join them. Right now, we have not joined them, and they are beating us blue and black. Africans with a Canaanite mindset cannot play the game of global money politics. It is the blessing or causes at the foundation of nations and the consciousness they produce that determine global prosperity and dominance. Marxist and radical social scientists and philosophers like Walter Rodney in his book How Europe Underdeveloped Africa have attributed the development of Europe and the development and the underdevelopment of Africa to military conquest, slavery, colonial rule, and neocolonial rule. But the question should be asked. The question remains, what produced the superior consciousness of the Europeans that enabled them to overrun the Africans, Indian, Chinese, Australian aborigines, New Zealand aborigines, and so on? Also, why is it that there is something in the consciousness of Asians that is always challenging the European race while Africans remain outside the arena. Why is it that the people who are challenging the European dominance are the Arab Asian Muammar Gaddafi of Libya or the Arab Asian Saddam Hussein of Iraq, Asia or the Chinese or the Chinese or the Japanese? Why can't Africans challenge come to the ring and and challenge others africans have not come into the arena there is a consciousness that works in partnership with, with, with nationalism that was the secret of the european race and now the asian race regional or ethnic nationalism should be harnessed as a tool for development there is a european consciousness Asian consciousness that's dominating the world and only an African Christian Zionist consciousness can match them. 
Thank you very much.